Welcome to this video. This is Patch Tuesday, uh, March 9th. Uh, so Microsoft just released their Patch Tuesday update about half an hour back. So it's time for us to quickly review what's got released and what vulnerabilities you should 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 be focusing on based on the severity rating and exploitability. So I'm here and I'm keeping this and I'm only interested in which got released today, which is March 9, 2021. And uh, this view I kind of like uh, and I have only keeping few of these items and I have taken uh, got rid of product family and product. What it does, it just duplicates and creates too many rows. So I just want to focus on this. So once I'm get once I'm, I have this view, the other thing I typically do will come to uh, the filter and I want to look at the critical ones. Okay, that's what I'm most interested in. So if I look at it, now uh, I have a table, okay, where I am only looking at what are the critical vulnerabilities that got released uh, half an hour back. And uh, uh, they are kind of ordered by their base code. So let's, it's not ordered, so let's just order it, okay. So let's order it. So I have uh, three vulnerabilities, looks like that is uh, nine and above. So that's a very high uh, severity and uh, and I have whole bunch that are we have actually two of the three of them that are in uh, eight to nine range and uh, we have uh, some others uh, that are uh, lower in this in the base core but still product fam and severity Microsoft is still considering them to be pretty uh, pretty pretty critical so uh, the first one, uh, I kind of, I was looking at this one. This is related to the Hyper-V, uh, uh, Windows Hyper-V. So if you're not using Hyper-V for virtualization, you are not going to be impacted, okay? So that uh, kind of uh, uh, zeroes down what we should be looking at. So no impact if you don't have Hyper-V. The next one, this one is Windows DNS, Server Remote Code Vulnerability. So this one probably you may have uh, impact uh, in an infrastructure, you may have a lot of Windows server, but not all the servers uh, are configured as DNS server. So if you have a DNS server, then only you are vulnerable. Otherwise, you are not. <coughs> and this particular one, <coughs> I'm a little bit concerned because it says <coughs> exploitation is more likely. Excuse me. So, but uh, again, fact uh, is if my server is not configured to be DNS server, is it vulnerable? Your answer is no. Okay, it's not uh, vulnerable. And uh, you can read some more information about how you can maybe try to mitigate this vulnerability as well. But this one to me is probably a lot more people will have uh, this vulnerability than the first one. So go back and, and, and note, these are mostly all of them are remote code execution vulnerability, okay, which are marked as critical. Okay, so those two, let's look at one more and uh, let's see which one is this this one is azure sphere unsigned code execution vulnerability again if you're not using azure sphere then uh, it's not going to be impacted and you are not there's no impact so uh, here you have some guide how do you ensure my azure sphere device has the update so here they have specific direction how to fix it but i would still think probably uh, it's not a, a huge huge impact for a lot of organizations where they have they, they are not using the Azure Sphere. So let's just go back and maybe look at a couple more <coughs> in the 8 range. So this one, what we have, uh, Internet Explorer Memory Corruption Vulnerability. So this one probably again, uh, probably has a much bigger impact. So let's look at what we have. So at a complexity, complexity is low, privilege uh, is no privilege required. So this is probably, I would treat it pretty, pretty serious. Although you have a user in interaction is needed. So you probably have to send some way to trick a user to perform something. And the exploit code maturity is problematic. This says proof of concept code is already available. So... <laughs> And this is exploitation is detected. That means it's actively exploited. So this one uh, to me is going to be very, very serious to me. And, and I would probably go ahead and uh, patch the system as soon as possible. Okay, this is now 
uh, has just become my uh, number one vulnerability to be fixed okay so let's go back let's look at some more let's see what's going on with some others so 21300 this one uh 21300 is right here it's a git for visual studio. this is another important one okay this is because a lot of people they would be using uh visual studio uh for the development and git as their uh software uh, management like tracking the version of the software and how the changes are, ha are happening and in this one at least uh, you don't have the exploit code available at least it's not known Exploitation is little less likely, but but still, I probably have a lot of developers who like Visual Studio Code. I, I love it personally, Visual Studio Code a lot. Okay, so this one is also important to me. Uh, and over here, for some of these, you see that uh, you can download the security patches directly. Some others, you probably have to do some more investigation and figure out how to fix the problem. Okay, look at one more and then I'll hopefully I'll let you go and do your own research over here. Open type font parsing again. This is, uh, if you're not using this font, it's not a huge concern uh, in your in your, in your your organization. Let's look at a few more over here. Let's see, what I'm looking for is, is there anything that's currently being exploited? Again, HEVC video codec extension. If you're not using it, uh, you know, you're probably okay. Not, don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, let's look at this one, two seven zero six one. Uh, again, uh, HEVC. I'm not concerned. Two seven zero six one. Okay, let's get rid of this. Uh, let's look at nine o two. We are still in the seven range at the moment. As again, same HEVC. If you're not using this, this codec, you're you're fine uh let's look at 27074 let's see what we have here it, again it's another one with azure code execution vulnerability if you're not using this product i uh, don't have to worry about it so come back over here now uh, we are back to couple that are that says nine we thought we uh, uh, configured it by base code but maybe we didn't uh, okay, okay, this one is a Microsoft Exchange Server Remote Code Execution Vulnerability. So this one, we already know about this problem. This one, release date was March 2. Uh, I already had a video describing this problem and the patch. I'm not going to talk about it anymore uh, right now. So let's go look at a couple more. Uh, 412. The 412 is again, their whole bunch related to Microsoft uh, Exchange Server that uh, everybody knows that are currently being exploited. And if you have the vulnerability, you probably should not even have the vulnerability. You should have probably applied the fix over the weekend, right? So again, this was released on March 2, so I'm not worried about this. So let's get rid of it. Let's come back over here. Actually, you know what? This we should not be even looking at. Those are vulnerabilities that are March 2. And I really wanted to focus on vulnerabilities that got released uh, in March 9th. So that's about it. So we really looked at uh, Windows DNA Server. That you should take care of. And uh, this one uh, that we looked at, uh, uh, Git for Visual Studio and the uh, Internet Explorer vulnerability that is currently being exploited and your exploit code is available. So pay a lot of focus on these uh, three vulnerabilities. And if you can take care of these three, uh, you should be in a pretty good shape. All right, that's all a quick update uh, from uh, my side. Uh, just stay safe and, uh, and, uh, and, and enjoy. Thanks for watching this video. Bye-bye.